Saab's exploration of a Canadian final assembly site for its Gripen fighter marks a notable pivot in how combat air programs scale under pressure, and the pressure today is unmistakable. A letter of intent between Sweden and Ukraine for as many as 150 aircraft has forced the Swedish manufacturer to consider nearly doubling its output while preserving quality and configuration control. Canada's mature aerospace base, long industrial ties with Saab, and transatlantic logistics make it a credible candidate to host end-stage assembly and flight testing. While no contract has been signed, Saab's leadership has been explicit that a Ukrainian requirement in the high double digits would require new regional hubs beyond the current lines in Linköping and São Bernardo do Campo. The company's plan is not simply to add headcount but to replicate a standardized, digitalized build system designed for parallel production. The underlying logic is as much about resilience as it is about speed. Saab's model relies on a modular manufacturing architecture in which sub-assemblies flow from a diverse supplier pool and are mated at multiple sites using common tooling, identical calibration equipment, and a shared digital backbone. By synchronizing processes across facilities, the firm aims to ensure that a wing section fabricated in Europe can be joined to a fuselage segment completed in another hemisphere with minimal manual rework. This, copy exactly, approach, refined with the Gripen E program, is meant to protect schedules if one site faces disruption and to shorten delivery timelines to frontline users. It also provides a framework to integrate new industrial partners, Canada among them, without diluting quality assurance standards or fragmenting the configuration baseline. Canada offers several advantages that dovetail with Saab's distributed strategy. The company already operates offices in Ottawa, Halifax, and Medicine Hat and supplies systems in service with Canadian forces and federal agencies, including the Carl Gustav shoulder-launched weapon, the RBS-70 NG short-range air defense system, see Giraffe AMB radars on Halifax-class frigates, and live training solutions. Saab also partners with Bombardier on Global A, with airframes originating in Canada before mission integration in Sweden, demonstrating a working transatlantic production rhythm. During its previous participation in Canada's fighter replacement campaign, Saab proposed local assembly, life cycle support, and centers for research, cyber resilience, and sensors, capabilities that, while never realized in that competition, sketch a roadmap for what a Canadian Gripen hub could become for export production. The immediate catalyst remains the Ukrainian Air Force's prospective order. Ukrainian planners have repeatedly flagged attributes that match wartime demands, short takeoff and landing performance, rapid turnarounds by small ground crews, and the ability to operate from dispersed or improvised runways. Gripen's concept of operations, built around quick refuel and rearm cycles and austere basing compatibility, maps to that requirement. Saab has indicated a willingness to stand up final assembly and testing in Ukraine when security and financing conditions allow, but in the near term, capacity elsewhere will be essential. Discussions in Europe about funding mechanisms, including the politically sensitive notion of tapping portions of frozen Russian assets, underline how closely industrial planning is now tied to broader policy debates. A Canadian node would give the program a North American anchor while work in Europe scales in parallel. On the shop floor, the aircraft itself was engineered for this kind of distributed build. Gripen E uses a digital manufacturing architecture that links advanced 3D modeling, automated drilling, and precision riveting to reduce assembly time versus earlier variants, while a unified database tracks each airframe through every workstation. The avionics are partitioned so flight-critical and mission software evolve on separate timelines, enabling frequent capability drops without full recertification. The hardware stack, anchored by AF414 GE 39E engine assembled under license by Volvo Aero at about 98 kilonewtons of thrust, Leonardo's ES-05 Raven AESA radar, an IRST, and NATO-compatible data links, sits within a weight envelope of roughly 8,000 kg empty and 16,500 kg maximum takeoff. This combination of standardized interfaces and software-defined growth is what allows components produced in different countries to meet seamlessly on a final assembly line far from the program's origin. 
For Canada, the start point would almost certainly be final assembly, ground testing, flight trials, and in-service support, with deeper work packages added as the workforce is trained and qualified. That phasing mirrors the Brazilian experience, where Saab and Embraer built up domestic capability while more than 400 engineers and technicians trained in Sweden. Engines, landing gear, radar subsystems, and electronics from established suppliers, Volvo Aero, Leonardo, General Electric, Honeywell among them, would initially arrive as part of structured kits, with the Canadian team integrating and certifying completed aircraft to a common standard. Over time, composite manufacturing, avionics production, and software integration could migrate to the site, provided quality metrics and throughput targets are consistently met. The goal is not to fragment production but to multiply capacity using identical processes. The strategic stakes are larger than one contract. Saab's order backlog has expanded on the back of higher European defense outlays and new awards in sensors, weapons, and training systems. Historically, Gripen production peaked around the high teens per year, the company's current plan envisages regional centers capable of 20 to 30 jets annually, pushing combined capacity beyond 50 aircraft if demand materializes. Achieving that ramp requires more than floor space, it calls for aggressive hiring, tooling investment, and the discipline to hold every site to the same statistical process controls and non-destructive inspection routines used in Sweden. The payoff would be a more shock-tolerant supply chain and a faster path from contract signature to squadron service, an increasingly decisive advantage when customers are reconstituting air power under urgent timelines. There are risks and trade-offs that come with this ambition. Establishing a new line in Canada will contend with North America's tight labor market for aerospace skills, competition for supplier capacity from larger civil programs, and the regulatory and export control complexities inherent in a multinational fighter enterprise. Political continuity matters as well, a cross-border defense manufacturing node depends on stable policy environments, predictable funding flows, and clear agreements on technology transfer and intellectual property protection. Saab's model mitigates some of this by retaining overall systems integration responsibility and enforcing standardized digital tool chains, but discipline at the interfaces, engineering, legal, and operational, will determine how smoothly additional hubs slot into the network. For Ukraine, the benefits of a Canadian assembly option would be measured in calendar time and operational autonomy. If a contract is finalized and financing secured, a second or third final assembly stream could compress delivery schedules and allow training, spares provisioning, and documentation to track closely with aircraft rollouts. Over the medium term, localized assembly under Swedish oversight, first outside Ukraine, eventually inside it when conditions permit, would see the sovereign maintenance and upgrade ecosystem, reducing dependence on long logistics tails during wartime. For Canada, Participation would translate into high-skill employment, export class credentials for its suppliers, and a durable role in a European-led fighter program that complements existing cooperation on global eye and naval radar systems. What makes the Canadian option compelling is not a single factor but the accumulation of aligned incentives, Saab needs surge capacity and geographic redundancy, Ukraine needs timely deliveries and a path to industrial self-reliance, Canada's aerospace sector seeks programs that reward depth rather than offset headlines. A distributed, digitally synchronized Gripen enterprise offers a plausible answer on all three counts. If the pieces come together, contracting, financing, workforce, and standardization, Canada could become a transatlantic bridge for a fighter designed from the outset to be built, maintained, and upgraded by a network. In a defense market where speed, resilience, and interoperability now outweigh legacy production geographies, that would be less a departure from tradition than a preview of how combat air manufacturing will operate in the years ahead.